right, so this is going to be the last February update. We've gone through step three selection, so now we're going to end the summer and see what comes next. Moths bounced against your window, attracted by the light of your room. A siren called in the slow, darkening sky, just as the day was coming to an end. So, too, would summer. Liz would be moving back into the dorms before long. Luckily, Lee had been able to come stay for a short trip before her own new journey began. She'd officially been accepted to her first choice, college, a few weeks ago. This was her last chance to see you all in person for... You flicked through the plans for the next few months, realizing that you didn't even know when you next have the opportunity for everyone to be in the same place again. It was hard to think that you'd be, you'd likely be seeing even less of your cousin going forward, but you were delighted that she was pursuing her dreams. While you were still with each other, your family was going to have dinner together. As ever, the Holdens were tagging along too. Mmm, Chinese are tropical. Whoops. Chinese. It was somewhere your family had always enjoyed going ever since you and Liz were teeny. That long-standing connection made it a fitting location for a final meal out before Liz and Lee set off again. Technically, you were getting ready to go out, though your mind was only half on the task. It was a pleasantly warm evening, the kind that ep epitomized the vacation feeling, and you were in no mood to spoil it by rushing around. It was strange to think that summer was coming to an end, yet you wouldn't be returning to school. That pattern had been in place for as long as you could remember and had come to feel like a natural rhythm as inescapable as the coming of the tide. This was the first time that you were going to be able to set your own tune. Whatever came next was entirely up to you. You were nervous but ready. Breaking from the structure of the old routine was scary. You could admit that. Yet you didn't want to be a child forever. You were going to hold your head up high and face the future. Mom called up from downstairs, tearing you from your thoughts as she told you it was time to head off. We raced downstairs, looking forward to the evening. Everyone piled into the car. While it was marketed as being suitable to hold five people, in practice, it made for a very tight fit. Your moms, sitting in the front, were fine. You, Liz, and Lee were squished in the back. Lee in the middle, wedged between you and your sister. But Mom was an excellent timekeeper. Thanks to her efforts, you pulled up near the restaurant on time. The process of getting out of the car was slightly easier than squeezing into it, with much less coordination required to release seat belts than to secure them. You gave Lee a hand as she clambered out from the back middle seat, then headed into the building as a group. A waiter greeted you as you entered. Ma let him know how many of you there would be in total, and he would, and he went to arrange a table that met your needs. He returned promptly to guide you to your seats. You perched comfortably in your chair, your head held aloft as if buoyed by today's good fortune. Your family settled down around you, all cheerful and looking forward to the evening ahead. Your drinks ordered had just been taken while the whole limbs came through the door. They were pointed in your direction, though with Mom waving an arm in the air, it was hardly necessary. Cove and Mr. Holden came to join you at the table. Mm. As greetings were being exchanged, Cove took a seat opposite to you. It had been left empty by unspoken acknowledgement that you and Cove would be wanting to sit together. Mr. Holden sat beside him. Hi! It's great to see you. Glad you could make it. Hello, everyone. You wouldn't believe how hungry I am. I you came to the right place, then. There was some laughter, though Liz groaned playfully, shaking her head at Mom's sense of humor. Growing up, she'd have complained, and Mom would have responded by making another comment. Liz had mellowed over the years, but she still made a show of despairing at Mom's jokes. Her reaction to them had become a joke in, an, in its own. Menus were soon passed around, and a temporary hush fell over the table as everyone read. It didn't last long, punctured by comments about what people had eaten here before, and light chatter about what people were considering tonight. Once the waiter had disappeared with your orders, Cliff piped up. Okay. So I've got some good news. Kira's making a trip out here tomorrow. Cove nodded, turning from his father to the rest of the table. Yeah, we talked about it and figured this was a good time for everyone. Very nice. That's great. Too bad she couldn't join us tonight. Everyone reacted pos positively to the news, though Ma looked wistful. It's a shame. If only we'd known. Here we are having a big meal without her. If we had waited one day, we could've, she could have joined us. 
Mom patted Ma on the back, gently nudging her from the realm of possibilities and what ifs and back to the evening that was going so well. Chin up, Lee and Liz will, su will still be here tomorrow. We'll just have to throw another get together and keep the fun train chugging along. Ma smiled warmly, taking Mom's hand in hers. That's true, there's plenty to celebrate right now, but there will be more good news and good times on the horizon. Right. right, and speaking of, that's not all we've got either. Mr. Holden's eyes were alight as he sat up straight in his chair, face angled towards his son. He barely let a beat go by before nudging Cove with his elbow, pushing him to follow up on the announcement. He was the very picture of a proud papa. Cove shied from the limelight, ducking his head down and staring at his lap as he spoke. Well, it's just I've switched over to working full time instead of only part time. Plus, I've been looking at apartments. There's a few I can choose from. He flicked his gaze up at everyone around the table, a smile creeping over his face. I'll be pretty busy going forward. Apartments. He was moving. Cove was going to move out of his dad's house after ten years. He wasn't going to be your neighbor anymore. Mr. Holden griped gripped one of Cove's shoulders and gave it a loving shake. His excitement couldn't be contained. Incredible. Cove's actually going to make it to adulthood. It's a miracle. Mr. Holden leaned back in his chair, staring up at the ceiling in mock wonder. I'm so glad. I wasn't convinced I'd be able to rear a kid all the way to this point, but thankfully I lucked out and got the best boy a dad could have asked for. Dad. Cove <laughs> blinkered his vision with his, <laughs> his hands on the side of his face, temporarily blocking his father from sight. Despite his genuine bashfulness, which left him unable to meet anyone's eyes after all the attention thrust his way, he was happy. Thanks. I was really lucky, too. You're a good dad. Aw. Aw, come here. Mr. Holden threw an arm around Cove's neck, pulling him into as close of a hug as the seat allowed. He rubbed his cheek on the top of his son's head while Cove chuckled, accepting the affection with good humor. He looked around at the faces of the company here. He'd been on this journey with everyone here for years, seen them falter and grow, and they had watched you go through the same. Now you were striking out on a new path. Cove was leaving his family home, Liz was heading back to college, while Lee was starting at hers. You were all heading in different directions, two different des destinations, some near and some far, but it wouldn't be long until you were all going your own way. It was bittersweet. You turned your head to the side, wistful, not wanting to spoil the evening with your troubles. You were glad that everyone was succeeding, but the idea of splitting up gave you a twinge of regret. These people had been key pillars in your life. Days ahead without them, no matter how bright and shiny, felt a little empty, like a theme park after closing time. But you focused your mind on the sweet side. New adventures were still ahead, and you could encourage that optimism. Uh, Cove brought some attention to himself with a clearing of his throat and a small interjection. I'm gonna stretch my legs while we're waiting for the food and everything. Sure, sure. Sure thing, bud. With a teeny smile, he nodded at his dad, but the lightness to his expression faded when he moved to face you. Wanna come? He was attempting to be subtle, but there was very obviously something on his mind, something he wanted to talk to you about alone. You watched him with concerns as he rose from your seat. Yeah, I'll go. Take care. With those parting words, the two of you walked about the place. He was trying to get as far away from everyone else as possible without actually exiting the building. You waited for him to talk. You were sure he would. Go started pulling at the hem of his shirt. He turned his head back to face you, but it was an awkward movement. Hi. Well, I... I wanted to talk to you one-on-one -on -one about all this. You know, my work, moving. I mean, it was coming before, but now it's pretty much here. Yeah, it's exciting. Cove stopped picking at his shirt, and he seemed to respond well to that response. He was relieved you weren't upset about it. I'm glad you think so. But then he looked down, and his brows furrowed. You saw his hands shift away from his clothes, to instead grab at his arm. Are you looking forward to it? I am. I mean... Well, I'm trying to be. He ducked his head further, and you saw his face start to redden. But it's scary. I don't want things to end. <laughs> Come on, you don't need to worry. It may be scary now, but it'll be worth it. I sure hope so. Cove then turned his head away and wrapped his arms around himself. He felt a sudden chill that definitely wasn't caused by the air conditioner. That's... It's happening, you know? What I talked about earlier this summer. The world isn't going to keep us together anymore. It'll all be up to us now. 
But everything is still gonna be okay, right? We're still gonna be okay? Hmm. He kept calm. You understood his concern. It was definitely hard to imagine what would happen. However, you didn't let yourself get upset. I want it to be forever. You thought about the future and how unsure it was. You couldn't know what was to come. However, there was one thing that you did know, and that was how much you cared about him. Cove laughed with a delicate smile on his face. <sighs> okay, you win. I wanted to prepare myself for the horrifying unknown, but you're kind of giving me no choice but to be optimistic here. His eyes sparkled with mischief. Strong armor. <laughs> oh no, I can't believe you're being forced to have hope in t about your life. His lips twitched at your sar sarcasm. Right. I know, how am I going to get past this? He gave a small smile and then stopped joking around. Thanks for listening to me, Eclair. It helped. He felt pleased that his anxiety had eased after talking it out. Cove watched you with affection written plainly across his face. Eclair, you're just so... so... well... His eyes darted to the table full of your families. He was getting uneasy again, but he seemed determined when his gaze came back to you. Could we talk again? Even further away? Like, outside? You were intrigued and nodded at his words. We can go. Thanks, it's important to me. With that, you left the restaurant and went out into the sidewalk. A couple cars drove by on the main street and the breeze hit your face. Cove prepared himself to speak his mind. I... Whatever else he wanted to say after that was trapped in his throat. He watched patiently as his mouth slowly closed moments after nothing else followed. Cove took a deep breath and then another. His gaze clung onto you. Laser focused. There's something I've wanted to tell you about. About something I... something that I've realized. His voice shook, and there was no mistaking the fear in his blue eyes. Goosebumps broke out across your skin, and you subconsciously started wiping your sweaty palms on the side of your hip. Well. But I haven't. I haven't said it. I'm just... I'm not very good at talking about this. Your chest was sore from how hard your heart was beating, but it continued to drum faster and faster. The world around you seemed to slow as you realized Cove was waiting for you to say something. okay, you can tell me. That seemed to be exactly what Cove needed to hear. He smiled softly and you watched his shoulders start to relax. Cove's expression hardened, his hands balled up into fists. Claire? He said your name boldly, but then his confidence faltered as he stared deeper into your eyes. Only a squeak came out next. If Claire, I, you, uh... He frowned, wobbly, and his face became a dark red. It was plain on his face that his nerves were spiraling. Then Cove froze completely. He waited for him to compose himself. Instead, he crumpled forward, burying his face in his hands. He can't do it. Not yet, he realized, feeling disappointed. Sorry. I'm sorry. Cove continued to hang his head in defeat, and he knew it would take at least one more chance for him. He started on his way, but it was always a struggle for Cove to fully take that next step. Understand. You muttered the words, having no idea if he even heard you or not. Poe didn't react at all, but you already accepted that you weren't going to get an answer out of him right now. Awkwardly, you glanced back at the restaurant for a moment, finally remembering what had originally brought you to this place. We should probably go back inside, right? We've been out here a while. Cove continued to hide his face, and you st just barely caught his meek nod. That was better than nothing. You started making your way over to the restaurant door. Within moments, you realized that you could only hear the sound of your own steps on the pavement. You stopped and turned, seeing Cove standing in the same spot and position. Cove? Slowly, he lifted his head out of his hands. From a distance, you couldn't quite make out his expression. <sighs> no, no, I can't. I'm not doing this. Finally, he moved. He approached you at a brisk pace, stumbling a bit, and when he got close enough, Cove d dropped his hands on your shoulders. The determination had returned to his features, and he leaned his head down to look you in the eye. I'm always like this. I panic, and I quit partway through. His voice shook a bit at the beginning, but as he lowered to a hushed tone, it evened out. A shiver shot down your spine as you watched tears well in his eyes. I'm so scared of things changing and new stuff happening, and just everything you have to deal with 
living a life. His voice cracked as he continued, though it didn't halt. Oh, yeah. But the worst of any of it is thinking about the future and not knowing if you'll be there. And I don't want to be afraid to say that. I don't want to be scared of anything that has to do with us, not even, not when it comes to you. You're the one who makes me less afraid. When something is horrible, you can make it better. When I feel alone, you're what lets me know I'm not. Sometimes I can't even remember what my life was before I moved here, before you were in it. I was so little and it was such a long time ago and it was so hard then. But I do remember those days when we were just kids running around the neighborhood. Even though we didn't even get along at first, it's still so clear in my head. It was like my life had started over. It was a new beginning and nothing feels more right than you being there. Not just back then, but always. As much as he tried willing and blinking the tears away, they won. Big tears bubbled and burst from his eyes and they ran down his cheeks. But Claire, I, I want to be with you. I want to be with you too. The words came completely naturally. Your mouth pulled into a beaming smile that made you feel like it had a high chance of being permanent. There were probably a million moments or more over the years where you looked at him and thought about saying it, but there was nothing stopping you anymore. You wanted to be with him, and now you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that Cove actually felt the same way about you. Cove's eyes widened and his breath hitched. You could feel his hands on your shoulders begin to tremble. The way his expression twisted, you knew that he was struggling to put his thoughts in order. You wondered if he even believed the last few minutes actually happened. Is this really all right? And that was all he could muster in the teeniest whisper, but you knew the weight of those words. You had a long history, and this would change things. Your head tilted towards him as you stared at him fondly, feeling your skin burn hot and your heart beat a smile a minute a mile a minute in your chest. Of course it is. Cope let out a long, shaky breath. He still seemed to have difficulty believing he had spoken those words and that you had returned the feelings. Eclair, I if you want me, am I can I be your boyfriend? I'd like that a lot. Can't think of anything I'd like more. His lips quirked into a hopeful smile, his eyes still glistening. <laughs> I definitely want you. <laughs> you hugged him. You closed the distance between you and him and wrapped Cove in a full embrace. You squeezed tight and rested your head near his heart. You could hear his pulse speed up as he held you. He nuzzled his face against yours and you felt warm. His eyes prickled with new tears and he sniffled, but you could recognize equal joy taking over him. You both were happy, together. You were together and happy. Oh, mm. You wiped away his tears. You carefully brushed aside the teeny water droplets for, with your thumb. Cove bashfully leaned into your caress. Then Cove reached up to caress your cheek delicately. He took a moment to simply cherish you. A peaceful smile grew on his face and his eyes sparkled. Oh, yeah. Can I kiss you? Your jaw dropped. No matter what else had just happened, that was not a desire you expected Cove Holden to be capable of vocalizing. You were completely floored. Seeing your reaction made him realize exactly what he had done. He had seriously asked to kiss you. An intense blush covered over every inch of his cheeks in absolute embracement, but he didn't take it back. You kissed him. Unable to stop yourself, you pulled him into a kiss. Shock initially froze him, but Cope didn't seem need encouragement from there. He kissed you in return, urgently. To him, if he didn't do it now, if he didn't take this chance, it was as though you'd slip away from him forever. You knew this was right. Cope blinked rapidly when you parted. Newly stunned, but it was only with amazement. What happened was shocking and unexpected, but he absolutely wanted to hold on to this new thing between you. He ducked his head with a childish giddiness and peeked at you out of the corner of his eyes. Thanks for giving me a chance to finally get it together and say this. You are worth it. Eclair. Uh. Oh, um, we're gonna have to tell everybody about this when we get back, aren't we? I don't think they'll be surprised. He smiled at you with an unabashed uh, preciousness. You figured that even without your history, if anyone caught Cove looking at you like that, it'd be obvious exactly how he felt. 
His openness of character had some truly delightful benefits. He must have been making an expression equally as affectionate because he began to fluster again. He made some stuttering chuckles and then quieted down his mouth, forcefully staying closed. You both took in a moment to process. After ten years of being together, you were officially a couple now. After all of that, you both finally made it back inside the restaurant. Cove was clearly nervous. Now that you were together, your families were going to have to hear about it. But with you by his side, he continued forward. You could feel eyes on you as you took your place at the table. They didn't wait long to start asking if you were alright and what had happened. It didn't help that Cove's face flushed immediately over the attention. Quickly, it all became way too much. You couldn't meet anyone's stare and under the table your hands fidgeted nervously. Cove sealed his nerves and faced the small crowd. I, uh... Well, the truth is that Claire and I are... Grins were already beginning to appear around the table before you could muster the full explan before he could muster the full explanation. He swallowed hard, stealing a glance at you. A couple now. We're dating, though haven't gone on a date yet, exactly. Uh it's just I'm her boyfriend, so yeah. Co stopped his rambling there with wide eyes. He waited tensely for a response. Mr. Holden was the first to react, instantly slapping a hand over Cove's shoulder. His other hand smacked against his own chest over his heart. You did it. That's amazing. Cove, Eclair, if you need anything, I'm here. Don't hesitate to come to me for help. What help? Well. Son, I'm so happy for you and Eclair. Of course, just take care of yourselves. This is either heading towards the breakup of a lifetime or a wedding, and I will be there for either. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh, Dad. Cove covered the side of his head that was facing Mr. Holden with a hand and sunk lower in his chair in some desperate attempt to put distance between himself and his father's words. Meanwhile, the woman in your family all burst into laughter. Pull back on those reins a little there, Cliff. They're not ones to rush. It took them a decade to reach boyfriend and girlfriend status. Don't worry about it. I don't think we need to start looking at venues yet. Exactly. This is wonderful news, and all we need to do is congratulate them on it. Eclair Cove, I'm so glad for you both. I know you'll be happy together. We're rooting for you. Yes, we are. Ah, this is so exciting. I knew you were meant for each other. Well, I called this one. I called it years ago. I mean, yeah, you kind of did, Liz. I should have made a real bet with someone, though. I don't think anyone would have been dense enough to bet against it. Cove let himself fall forward, sticking himself to the table surface. There was no getting away from this. <laughs> Your spirit's up, but you felt a little bad for Cove. He always took this type of attention ba badly. You gave him a supportive look, though he likely couldn't see it from his position. Once the wave of family teasing and cooing passed, you were able to feel grateful for both families' encouragement. It made you happy, knowing just how loved you were. Night fell soon after everyone finished their meals, and before you knew it, you were standing in the parking lot saying your goodbyes and packing up the cars to go home. After the last of the chores were done, your family spent some more time together. The rest of the night felt like it was going by in a blink of an eye, and somehow the time came to retire to your room to sleep. You pulled your covers up under your chin and settled down for the night, getting warm and cozy. As your head sunk into your pillow and you closed your eyes, your mind drifted back to everything that had happened that day. You could see it all now, behind your eyelids, as though you were experiencing it all over again. And then the image of Cove popped into your head, and you smiled softly to yourself. <laughs> oh, you decided to send him a text to chat. Taking your phone from your bedside table, you lay on your back and held it above your face, typing out a message to Cove. Hi, are you awake? He didn't reply and you let out a defeated sigh as you locked your phone screen and let your arms fall back down. He must have fallen asleep. Suddenly your phone buzzed in your hand and you scrambled to check the message that had just come through. It was Cove. Yeah, what's going on? I'm testing you, that's what. What are you doing? You watched the little dots on your screen as he typed before his next message popped up on your screen. I'm just heading to bed. Good night. Good night. Shouldn't keep him up. You tapped out your reply before setting your phone down at the bedside table again and plugging in the charger. 
cocooning your blankets around yourself, you snuggled into your bed and soon found yourself drifting off into a deep, restful sleep. The next morning, you woke up slowly from a comfortable dream, finding yourself safe and warm and tucked up in bed. With a small stretch, you opened your eyes, the sun shining through the window. After waking up a little more and getting ready, you headed downstairs to find your family all gathered around the kitchen area. Good morning! You greeted them all, receiving a course of good mornings back in return. Uh, you nodded in acknowledgement as you headed into the kitchen to find some breakfast. A knock at the front door caught your attention, and curiosity pulled you to follow several steps behind Mom as she went to answer it. Cove was waiting there with both of his parents. Morning! Hello! Hi there! Surprised at that sight, Mom paused a moment, and then she pulled Kira into a big hug. Meanwhile, you approached the doorway and flashed a small smile at Cove. Kira, it's been too long. I know, time's been flying. Kira's gaze slid over to you. She waved. Hey, yeah. Hi there, Claire. Binding your bottom lip, you nodded slightly. Hello. Ah, give her a hug. Then you hugged her. You intended on it being brief, but she gave you a lasting squeeze. A small squeak escaped you and then a chuckle. When you stepped back, there was no missing the merriment sparkling in her eyes. Enough to standing around out there. Come on in. Mom moved aside to usher the group in and guided them to the living room. Before anyone could get settled in, Mom spoke up. You're all welcome to stay for breakfast. We still have some great spices and stuff from the farmer's market. Yes, we'd be thrilled to host you. There were eager nods from Mr. Holden and Kira, but Cove looked around the room filled with familiar faces before speaking up. Maybe instead of staying here, why don't we go to the beach? Hmm. A scenic picnic, eh? Mr. Holden crossed his arms and contemplated the idea happily. Excited, Kira clapped her hands together. Yeah. Oh, we could really make a day out of it. Might as well enjoy the ocean while we can. That sounds lovely, Cove. Everyone else put in their own agreement with Cove's suggestion. Before long, both families dispersed to getting everything ready. Sandwiches had to be made, water, sunscreen, towels, and more needed to be gathered and packed. An hour later, both your families and Coves are walking down the old path to the beach. The morning was already turning into a bright and beautiful day. You honestly couldn't ask for better weather for a beach trip. The moment you laid your eyes on the full view of the ocean, you stopped and stood there mesmerized. It didn't matter that you grew up there. The sight always filled you with wonder. Hey, Eclair. Hmm? So? I was thinking about calling Terry and Miranda, see if they can come too. Everyone else is pretty much already here, so... Would your family mind? I can ask them. Already, you couldn't imagine any problems your moms could have with the idea. Cove matched the grin growing on your face. You were eager to see your friends join the fun today. You made your way over to your moms. I have a question. Would it be all right if Terry and Miranda came by? I don't see why not. Ma looked to mom to see what she thought, and she nodded in agreement. Mom then shot a glance over at Mr. Holden and Kira, knowing that they had likely heard everything. Right Cliff, Kira, what do you two think? The more the merrier. Okay. Of course, they're welcome with me. Thanks. Delighted, you nodded and turned on your heels. Cove was still several feet away talking to Lee and Liz, likely about the same topic. With a beaming smile, you gave him a thumbs up, and the two of them must have also approved as Cove quickly gave it, got his phone out and started making the calls. At that, you turned your attention to helping with the picnic setup. Unexpectedly, your phone started vibrating. You dug it out, curious to see the caller ID, feeling your heart jump, and with excitement, you answered. It was Derek. Um, hi. Sup, Eclair. The voice that came through was much deeper than it had been when you first met, but it still had the exact same amount of enthusiasm of a, of a kid. Have you been uh, enjoying these crazy summer days? It's been amazing. Well, it's been amazing. That's awesome. You'll have to catch me up on that. But what about you? How's your summer been? You were beyond curious to know what Derek had been up to since the last time you spoke. He chuckled, noticing your invested tone. Honestly, I've just been slammed with stuff lately. College applications and scholarship inquiries. What else is new? I wish you nothing but good luck. I'm gonna need it. I kind of doubt that. He chuckled. You could hear his small smile when he spoke. Yeah? Yeah, of course. You've worked really hard. Well, it's true. Thanks. His cheerful tone elicited a chuckle out of you. What about your family? Are your brothers being good? My little brothers are little punks, but I guess they're doing all right. You laugh. You both laughed at that. It was easy to imagine the grin on his face. Mom and dad are fine. That's great. My moms are too. 
turning your attention back to your surroundings. You smiled warmly at your family buzzing around. Towels were laid out and the chairs and umbrellas were being set up. Actually, hmm. I'm out with my moms right now. Liz and Lee are here visiting too. Oh, that's fun, but if that's the deal, I'll let you get back to it. Are you sure? I don't mind. Uh-huh, I'm sure. I'm not about to lose your number. Okay, <laughs> bye. Bye, Claire. Have a heck of a day. Hanging up, the conversation left you energized and in good spirits. It was exactly what you needed to make this day even better. You hurried over to your moms and helped put the rest of the food out. In moments, you noticed Cove at your side. Turning to face him, your mouth pulled into a hopeful smile. You, you waited expectantly for what he had to say about the girls. They're gonna come. Really? Your whole demeanor brightened and your smile beamed. Yeah. They'll meet us here later today. Shouldn't be too long. I can't wait. Once the setup was done, everyone got comfortable and dug into the food. You couldn't remember the last time breakfast tasted this good, but you attributed, attributed <laughs> it to the gorgeous ocean view and the soothing sea breeze. Morning swiftly gave away to the afternoon, and a very recognizable face came walking down to the shore. Baxter seemed momentarily surprised to see you all there. He pleasantly approached with a wave. Hello, folks. Hello there. I didn't mean to intrude on the party. I was coming down to get some fresh air. Oh, you didn't intrude on anything. You're welcome to join us. We brought plenty of towels and food and sunscreen. Yeah, you're one of the neighbors. Kick back and relax with us. Thank you. Well, I couldn't possibly say no to that. Thank you. Baxter's gaze moved over to you and Cove. He smiled. Eclair, Cove, long time no see. Hi. You waved from where you leisurely sat and Cove nodded. We meet again. Yes, lucky for me. A few giggles escaped Lee as she watched Baxter. It was then that Baxter noticed the face he didn't immediately recognize from around the neighborhood. He turned up his charm even more for the introduction. Mm -hmm. mm, excuse me, I'm Baxter Ward. I'm sorry, we haven't met before. Well, I'm not typically from around this area. Just visiting. I'm Cove's mom. Oh, I'll remember that. It's very nice to meet you. After that, Baxter spent some time getting better acquainted with everyone, and Terry and Miranda arrived excitedly. I cannot talk. You took a moment to introduce the three, and conversations shifted to what you all would do next. In that case... We could do a few rounds of volleyball. There's plenty of us now. Is that all right? Could I play? Of course! Miranda brightened, delighted with this plan. Ma looked around to see if there were any other takers. Hmm. Hmm. I don't feel like playing. I'd have to change, but it'd be fun to watch. I could be the ref. My eyes won't miss a thing. Volleyball's a good idea, but there should probably be something happening for those who aren't a fan. Oh, I have some crafting supplies we could use to make jewelry. We could even use stuff we find around the beach to accentuate them. Accentuate Really? What, really? I want to make a necklace. I'd be interested in trying my hand at that, too. I could do that. Nice. Absolutely. Impromptu crafting is my kind of party. I'd like to join, too, please. Impromptu crafting. I'll make some jewelry. Already, you were imagining various designs you could make depending on what we let you use. Your cousin shot you a thumbs up, clearly happy with your decision. Kira got up from the towel she was sitting on. She brushed some sand off her legs and then stretched her arms over her head. Candy. I'm up for a few rounds. Well, since there is still a free spot, I'll throw my hat in the ring. The things I do for family. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. I love that. Liz got up from where she was sitting, and you could tell by her expression that she was already determined to win. You laughed to yourself, curious now how that game would turn out. Now that plans were settled, the group temporarily split into two. Okay. okay, let me pop back to the house, get my supplies. Anything we can do while you're gone? Hmm. Hmm, yes, we can start clearing out the towels for use to work at, and if you want, look around for good stuff to use. I'm on it. Roger that. While Lee ran back to the house, the group did just as she suggested. By the time she returned, everyone had their craft area ready to work at. Lee sat down on one of the towels and looked up at everyone eagerly. She held up two necklaces two necklace options. I hope you've all been thinking about what you want to make. I have for everyone a choice of either a chain or a threaded rope. How do I pick? All I know is that I want to put some sea glass chunks on it. That is a charming idea. His gaze went back and forth between these two necklace base options. You could tell he was thinking quite hard about it. Mm. I can't decide anything for mine. No rush. I'll leave the strands here and you can decorate it however you want later. I suppose I'll use whatever I spot around the beach first. Fate can decide. 
I think I'll keep it classic and only worry about finding a decent shell. Yeah, yeah I'm planning on doing shells too. Mm. Glass. Sea glass is very pretty. I'm not sure how often you can actually find it though. I'm gonna use some stones. Sounds good. Another classic design choice. Chuckling, you smiled and nodded in agreement. You were pretty happy with the idea you had in mind. Cove crossed his arms and chewed the inside of his cheek. You weren't the only one that noticed. What's wrong, Cove? I'm not sure what to use. I mean, ideally, I'd want a shark tooth, but what are the chances I would even find one? Mom smiled. You both looked at him sympathetically. Sorry. Sorry, the rare downside of not having a shark-filled coast. So that would make for a real nice necklace, though. I know. I know. At Cove's pouting, Mom gave him a little bump on the shoulder with her fist. Well, don't lose all hope. You never know. You might end up really lucky. Cove laughed. It cheered him up, even though he wasn't really convinced. After that, the little crafting club busily went to work on their pieces. Whatever they decided on using was attached in loops that were then slid into their necklace space. Terry was immediately proud of hers when she was done. Hers was simple but gorgeous because of the striking piece of sea glass she painstakingly searched for and found. Baxter excitedly showed his finished piece off to everyone. He stayed true to his word and used various materials he found along the beach. The necklace looked like it had good weight from the clutter. He always had an electric style, it seemed. Cove ended up using driftwood of varying lengths to design his necklace. Despite not finding any shark teeth, he still looked pretty pleased. Mom decided on a medium-sized purple ringed top shell as the centerpiece of hers, and Lee went with a few small simnia shells. They both put their necklaces on soon after finishing them. After combing the beach several times, you found just what you were looking for. It took a bit, but you managed to make a necklace you were satisfied with. It mostly had stones. Your group of crafters would also cheer for the volleyball players whenever shouts could be heard coming out of the court. On top of that, you all would hold up each newly made piece in the air, and the players would take a breath to applaud the creation. You really enjoyed searching the beach, trading supplies, and watching everyone make their necklaces. The crafting club was definitely a success, and you weren't the only one that had a blast. The afternoon continued to drift by, but the fun was still going strong. Occasionally, someone would head back to the house to the houses to use the bathroom, rest away from the sun a while, or to retrieve something that they needed, but they always came back. The beach was never empty and there was always a new conversation to take part on or another game to join. There was only one thing that could bring this beach day to an end, and that was for the day itself to end. Before anyone realized it, the sun began to set over the sea. As that happened, you were taking a break, sitting on a towel with your legs stretched out past it and your feet buried in the warm sand. Shortly, you look to see your mom's approaching, then stop in front of you and smile. Hey there, kiddo. How are you? How are you doing? Good. They both sat down, squishing you between them. Mom leaned her head against yours, and Mom started rubbing her back soothingly. Nothing more than was said at first, but Mom sighed contentedly. Mom looked at her wisp you wistfully. We're both really proud of you, Eau Claire. You grew up to be more than we ever could have hoped. It's only thanks to you two. Ma wrapped an arm around your middle and squeezed you tightly in a side hug. Mom continued lightly, scratching your back. That means a lot, but I still think you're selling yourself short. You've always been a lovely person, and I'm so thrilled to know you. Your face... Your voice faltered, and you honestly couldn't imagine your life any other way. Ma lightly brushed some of your hair back and left a small kiss there. I'm so happy I got to have both of you as my mom's. After that, all three of you were sitting there and getting all sentimental. I don't know how we got so lucky with you and Liz. Ma reached out in front of you for Mom's, Mom's hand and she gave it to her and Ma squeezed it. Of course. Mm, Claire has a point. We must have done something right. You stayed there quietly and contentedly, watching the sunset with your parents for a while. Until Mr. Holden called out to you. He was still walking in direction. We were talking and thinking we were going to take a walk down the shore. And do you want to come? Automatically, you looked to your moms for what they were thinking. Mom glanced from you to Ma and smiled. That sounds good That's to me. That's fantastic. Yes, that'd be very nice. My legs need some stretching. Granny, you looked back at Mr. Holden. You gave him a nod. Thrilled, Mr. Holden threw out a thumbs up and began heading back the way he came in a light jog. Hey, don't leave us in the dust. Cliff kept going forward but flipped around, walking backwards across the sand so he could face you no again. Worries. Don't worry, we wouldn't leave without you. All right, we'll catch up. Ready to go? Uh-huh. 
Both of your moms held a hand out to you, chuckling you gave them each one, and you all strode back to the rest of the group. When Liz was in reach, Ma used her free hand to pull her into it too. Liz shook her head, but her mouth quirked into a smirk and she didn't resist. Together as a family, you followed behind the others hand in hand. Your feet squished into the wet sand as the waves rolled over them, and you didn't have a single care in the world as more and more stars began to dot the sky. Once the sun had long been out of sight, it was finally time to pack up. The closing of the day and the ever-approaching end of summer seemed to intertwine. It caused a quiet, reflective mood to blanket over the group. On the beach, Terry and Miranda took turns, compressing Cove in a hug before moving on to do the same to you. You chuckled, still overjoyed that you got to see them today. Uh. I'm sorry we have to go already. My parents are here. That's okay. But still, I wish we could help clear this all up. Don't worry about it. Just thanks for coming out today. It was cool having everyone here. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, I'm super glad we came. Hopefully we can do it again sometime. Nodding, you turned your attention to Terry. She wore a large grin on her face and held a hand out for a low five. You obliged. See you later. Take care of yourselves, buddies. After that, they walked away, waving to you and Cove as they went down the shore. Cove waved quietly back with a small smile on his face. He waved to you. It was a big wave. You hoped Miranda was right and there would be another day like this soon. Taking you by surprise, Terry jumped and twisted around. She kept up with Miranda by walking backwards. She kept the mood for your farewell light by shooting finger guns at you and Cove. Miranda bumped her with a hip. It left everyone with a laugh, but just before disappearing down the bed. Declare? Come on. Hey, Cove, could you come here? Both of your parents were motioning for you. The two of you went to them. Tons of things ended up at the beach over the course of the day. So there was still so much to pack up and the parents needed help. With an odd, you got to it, stuffing various things into bags and bundling them up in towels. Once things were ready to go, everyone filled their arms with as much as they could carry. Absolutely no one wanted, wanted this to be a back and forth kind of task. The walk home ended up being mostly quiet as each person seemed to be feeling the effects of the day. A cool breeze carried you across the sand and into the road. There was, sigh, there was a sigh of relief from what felt like the group as a whole when they arrived back to the neighborhood. Baxter carefully placed what he had been carrying on the ground. Thank you so much for helping with that. Thanks. No, thank you for allowing me to join today. You all shared with me, helping to carry it back is the least I can do. Ma nodded and the others started collecting their things from his pile. Baxter, meanwhile, stepped over to you and Cove. It really was a pleasure getting to know you both this summer. His head tilted towards you and he smiled warmly. Baxter offered you his hand. You side-hugged him. It took a moment, but after shuffling what you were carrying, you were able to free one of your hands enough to pull Baxter into a quick hug. He genuinely laughed and looked at you fondly when you let go. I think we did end up as good Glad friends. I wholeheartedly agree, Eclair. I enjoyed this vacation immensely, thanks to you two. Baxter turned to shake Cove's hand this time. He was a little incredulous for a moment, but then Cove eventually shifted what he was carrying and took Baxter's hand. It wasn't long, but it was a solid handshake. Baxter was clearly pleased. I wish we had more time together, but it was still a nice ride. While it lasted, would happily do it all over again. Bye, Baxter. Yeah, bye. Baxter nodded and walked a few steps towards his condo. He then stopped and waved. Goodbye. Baxter sauntered away, completely disappeared into the condo to return to his own things. His time with you and your family and friends and ding. You paused for a moment, staring at where he went. But afterwards, you looked back over to the rest of the group. Lee and Liz were just going inside your house. You couldn't spot Kira or Mr. Holden anywhere, but the door to their house was wide open. Ma approached you with an amused look on her face. <laughs> Seems like you're holding up some of the Holden things. Surprised, you glanced down to take a quick inventory of what you were holding. Mom was right. Some of it belonged to the neighbors. Would you mind dropping it off now? Fatigue was starting to sink in, and you looked again at everything you were carrying. But you nodded. I can do that. Thank you. Cove took a few steps towards his house and stopped, waiting for you. Good night, Cove. I'll see you inside, Claire. Night. You caught up to Cove, and together you went over to his house. Walking in the front door, you saw Kira and Mr. Holden busily unpacking already. Things were scattered on counters, and they were moving around each other, putting the items away. They both lifted their heads when Cove closed the front door. Hey! It's nice seeing you again already, Eclair. Her teasing tone brought a light smile to your face. You hefted the stuff in your arms a little closer. I ended up with things of yours from the beach. Oh. 
Oh, thanks for getting that to us. Uh, you can put it in here on that coffee table. Mr. Holden pointed at the surface he was referring to, and you immediately left what didn't belong to your family there. Cove put his own things down on the floor, just as, at his feet, wading through everything strewn about to reach his parents. Putting your family's stuff on the ground for a moment, you dusted your hands off and straightened up. You needed a second of rest and a minute to re-situate re it all. You went over to where the others were too. Kira opened her arms wide, wanting to hug you. You accepted. You shyly averted your eyes for a moment. Kira smiled understandingly, then you stepped forward and let her pull you into a hug. She hugged you tightly so you could feel every bit of how much she was happy to know you. You felt cared about. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It was a blast. I thought so too. Kira eventually released you, but patted the top of your shoulders as a final gesture. Thank you. Every time I've gotten to come by, it's been an absolute joy. Things really couldn't have worked out better. Mr. Holden took a step closer to you. Kira moved aside to let him say goodbye to you. He grinned. Thanks for always being such a friendly neighbor, and not just right now, but for as long as I've known you. I didn't always make it easy, but you and your family are good people. I really, truly appreciate it. Thanks very it. much. Thanks again, Eclair. So much. At that, Mr. Holden reached over and gave you a soft pat on the top of your head. <laughs> you hugged him, too. Before either of you could process it, you had him locked in a hug. His body automatically went rigid, and you felt a ping of embracement. But before you could let go, he relaxed and began to lightly pat your back before shifting into a full hug. I, um, thank you. As you let go, he sniffled, but when he met your gaze once more, his mouth pulled into a wide, happy grin. Mr. Holden was staring at you, but his gaze seemed far away. Maybe he was looking back at who you used to be, the eight-year-old he had asked to be his son's new friend. See you. Bye, Claire. You smiled softly. Then Cove took a step forward. He gestured to his pile of things he had carried into the house. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about all that. I'll put stuff away in a few minutes. Right. I need to go do the same with my family. I figured. Cove walked you to the door and held it open, taking one last check around to make sure you had all your things to bring home. He went to the road. He leaned his body against the door frame, not following you out. So, this is it, huh? Actually, uh, that's not what I meant. His expression twisted and he shook his head a bit, like he was trying to banish the pensive thoughts. Bye. I'll just say bye. Bye. Word came out in a whisper and your lips pulled into a bittersweet smile. Everything felt too final for your liking. Cove reached forward and gently cupped your face with one hand. His thumb trailed across your cheek for several heartbeats. Mesmerized by his blue eyes, you stepped forward, delighted to oblige the request he was silently asking. He met you halfway as you smiled into the kiss. It was soft, with longing in your chest ache, knowing that there couldn't be anything more than this, at least for now. One of his hands grabbed into the door handle and firmly held it. He was stopping himself from coming along with you. As you walked over to your own front door, you stopped. Turning around, you spotted Cove right where you left him. You laughed quietly to yourself. For a small pause, you both stared at each other from across the street. You blew him a kiss. Cove reached out like he was catching it off the side, and then he curled his fist to his chest, holding the kiss close. Your lips curled into a beaming smile. Things couldn't be dragged out any longer. After one more shared smile, you opened the door and went inside, shutting it behind you. A few steps in, you saw your family gathering up in the living room. They were still busily unpacking and cleaning. You added the things you brought to the pile on the kitchen counter. Mom stood up, rubbed her eyes a bit, and she yawned loudly. I'm bushed. How about we finish the rest of the chores tomorrow? Yes, honestly, it's too late for this. Thanks. Please and thank you. Ma put her hands on her hips and turned to assess the room. Ma was not one who liked to leave a mess about, but she sighed. All right. I suppose we can make an exception to the usual rule. It has been a really long day. Liz grinned contentedly. Lee wasted no time in skipping over to you and hooking you into a side hug. Good night! I hope you have the loveliest of dreams of you-know-who. Lee ended the sentence with a wink and a hearty laugh. She let you go. <laughs> you blushed. Lee's grin widened as you took the bait. <laughs> Your face burned even more realizing that. Um, uh... You ended up shaking your head because you were too embraced to get any real words out. Lee giggled and then she put a hand on your shoulder. Don't worry, I'm not judging what you do in the privacy of your own mind. Lee! Sorry, I'm done. Here's to us, Declare. Tonight, tomorrow, and forever. Yeah, family forever. Lee leaned in close to whisper in your ear. You didn't fail to catch the teasing look on her face. Aww. Exactly, there's no escape. Oh no. 
So I got a laugh out of you, and you lightly pushed her shoulder. We stretched her arms high over her head. She yawned loudly and looked out with tired eyes. I think that's my cue to head to bed. Bye. I think so, too. Have fun sharing the room with Liz. She laughed at that, and Lee shuffled off towards the guest bedroom. Before you had a chance to do anything else, you could feel the top of your head being patted. You spun around to see Liz smirking. Nighty night. I'm heading to bed, too. It's been a long day, and I have a lot of prepare but to prepare for tomorrow. Exhaling, you automatically started fixing the back of your hair. When Liz didn't immediately walk away, you smiled softly at her. Everything okay? Her gaze moved away, and you knew she had more to say. You waited patiently for Liz to compose her thoughts. Just, it's been a good summer. It's nice to come back home. You nodded, and Liz gave you a teasing nudge as she went by. Amused, you turned and watched her go. Love you, baby sister. Good night, Liz. Night. You gave her a small wave, but she didn't see it as she was leaving. That didn't matter to you, because what she had said to you was what mattered most, and you planned on taking it to heart. When Liz was out of sight, Mom started up the next conversation over her shoulder. Mm. Aren't you heading up to bed, too? Mm. Oh, I relax first. Desperately, you needed some time to decompress and clear your mind. You worried if you went off to bed now that you would end up staring at the ceiling all night. Okay. Ma came over to you, smiling understandingly. She pulled you into a big love hug. Alright, you do what you need to. I love you. And when you were done hugging Ma, Mom pulled you into another hug. Their accents basically handing you off to the other had you laughing jubilee. I love you so much. I love you too. Aw. They both couldn't resist taking turns hugging you again. Your smile widened. It felt good to be loved. Good night, kiddo. Sleep tight. Good night, sweetie. Good night. After that, your mom's headed off towards their bedroom down the hall. You were about to turn the other direction when you heard mom's voice. And don't let the big bugs bite. Yeah. You heard mom chuckle as you watched them go with a smile. Time had passed, but you weren't entirely sure how much. Sighing, you sat up on the couch. It was a good rest, and only your tired muscles felt quite relaxed. You got up, planning on going to bed, when something out the window caught your eye. And your feet brought you right in front of the large windows spanning the length of the back wall. You stared out into the hills behind your house. As if on cue, your phone came on, alerting you of a new notification. It was Cope. Want to hang out on the hill tonight? Something inside told you that this was the right kind of night to take a trip out there. You sent him back a very quick message. Yeah. You went over to the front door and stepped over the threshold. You gave the living room one last glance over your shoulder. Then you shut the door behind you. Silently, you made your way to the poppy hill. With light steps in the dark, you walked across the hills behind your house. Up ahead, at the very top, silhouetted beneath the night sky, was a familiar figure, already waiting there. Smiling, you wonder just how he always got there first. You even had the advantage of living closer. Then again, and maybe it was only in your mind, but somehow Cove was intrinsically linked with this place. After all these years, it would be weird to scan this horizon and not find him there, as surreal as the shore without the sea. The distance between you was growing shorter by the second. Hearing the grass and the earth crunch under your feet, Cope turned, a grin spread over his face as he saw you. You took your place standing behind him on the crest of the poppy hill, looking out over the ocean. Same as you'd done on countless times since he'd first arrived, when you'd found him in this very same spot. Declare? He had officially broken the silence, the spell that had held you both in place. He looked at him expectantly. There's something I've always kind of wondered about. He cocked his head, giving you a sidelong glance. What did you think about when we met? I was just a kid you'd never seen before, bawling his eyes out on the hill next to your house. He chuckled, his eyes drifting towards the sea beyond before flipping back to you. The way his gaze pulled back to you made it clear that he was genuinely invested in the topic. Luckily for him, you remember what initially stuck to struck you in that moment. It was as if it had only happened yesterday. While well, I remember noticing the sad look on your face, Cove replicated that frown for you right now, looking grave at your reply. I guess. Yeah, I guess that would have been kind of hard to miss. Sighing a bit, you continue to reminisce about the first meeting. I also remember feeling bad about what was happening. I remember that too. He ran a hand through his hair, and you knew his line of questioning wasn't at an end, even before he spoke again. I mean, 
Do you remember what you thought about me, you know, as a person? Was I annoying or mean or... I didn't know what to make of you at first. Gov nodded, accepting your response. Gov's hand drifted to the scar on his arm, his fingers unconsciously gliding over the mark. It was much less noticeable than it had been when the neon pink cast had first come off. Shrunken gradually over the years as his body healed, then dwarfed in comparison to his growing body. Still, his fingers came back to it without thinking. He gave a half smile, not meeting your eyes. <laughs> no matter what you were thinking, I doubt it was worse than what I had going in my mind. He raised an eyebrow at his vague words, wondering what it was that he meant. Cove lifted his head up, finally committing to meet your eyes fully once more. I remember you that day. I remember it really well. I don't think I'd ever be able to forget. I can picture the way you looked back then when I first saw you standing right there. I still know the expression on your face when you choose to sit with me in the grass. He chuckled, self diversely interrupting his own monologue. <laughs> you scared me at first. I figured I'd be alone out there until I had to face my dad again, and then suddenly another kid appeared out of nowhere. It was startling, but I got over that fast. You were a strange person in a strange place, but in that moment, you were exactly what I needed. Somebody I could talk to freely about what was happening and how it made me feel. And you listened to me. You stayed with me. He sighed. Then bit his lip as he gave a small smile. I, uh, I was a little uh, bit spoiled growing up. It wasn't bad. You were dealing with a lot. Cope tilted his head to the side, smiling softly at your defense of his smaller self. He looked off again, seeking clarity for his thoughts in the expanse of the night sky. What I'm trying to say is, when I was younger, I viewed myself basically as the center of the universe. I didn't even imagine it wasn't like that. I mean... Things didn't simply happen, that would be weird, according to my little kid brain. It made far more sense that everything in my life had a specific connection to me, somehow, right? He sought affirm affirmation in you, baby eyebrows raised as he tried to explain his childlike logic. So at the time, you felt almost unreal. Like you weren't just anyone, some other kid who happened to live in that neighborhood with your own whole life that wasn't connected to Cove Holden. No, to me, you were there so that you could find me when I was lost. I kind of expected it all to vanish like a dream when that night was over. I would wake up and everything would be the same again. That's... I'd be back in my bed at home, my real home, with both my parents. The future was something I couldn't picture anymore. I didn't know what school would be like when I went back, or the table where I'd eat breakfast the next morning, or anything. And if I couldn't imagine it, how could I think it was something actually happening? I couldn't grasp my new reality. It was too big for me to hold all at once. So I never thought I'd see you again. Then go beamed at you, his eyes shining bright. <laughs> and I never ever would have been able to guess that ten years later, when I was growing up, the two of us would still be together. I guess that makes me your dream come true. You'd been joking, but Cove nodded in agreement. You are. You exactly are. But the smile faded from his face as his eyes both grew together. That was the worst day of my life at that time. The day my family broke apart. It was too heavy for me to even think about. I felt that way for I don't know how long. He held a hand over his heart, connecting with the pain he'd felt as a child, and looked at you earnestly. It's okay. But that was never really true. Things have only gotten better with me and with my dad and mom. It was the change we all needed. His eyes were growing misty. So when I remember that night, that time right now, it's not the point that my life was over. It was only the moment that I met the woman I was going to be with. When I was crying to a stranger over what I thought I'd lost, I didn't have any, any idea that she would be the one thing in the world that I actually wouldn't be able to live without. You couldn't reply to that. Then you cheered up. Poe stroked your cheek, wiping away your tears with the pad of his thumb. Hey Claire, it's okay. This is your place to cry too. Thank you. I'm just happy. Me too. So am I. Poe sighed contentedly. His voice was as delicate as the petals on the poppies which crowned his hill. He tilted his head up, thoughts lost in the sparse clouds above. 
I wonder how late it is. I guess it doesn't really matter. My dad is fine with me being out whenever. You could still text your dad about what you're doing. I'm gonna message my mom. He might appreciate it. I guess. Probably. You were pleased to see Cove slip his phone out of his pocket and type away at it. You also brought your phone out long enough to shoot off a text. They wouldn't see it anytime soon, but they'd be in the loop once they were up. Are you going to lay in the grass now? Wow, how'd you know? I just thought you might want to. With a chuckle, Cove flopped down on the ground and laid on his back, his usual way of spending time here. He laid down and snuggled against him. You lowered yourself against Cove's side in the grass and wrapped an arm over his chest. Cove smiled at you and used his free hand to cradle your face. Both of you finally settled in to relax on the hill. It felt like just the beginning of one of your over one of your nightly outlings, but then you realized the sun was peeking out over the horizon. Cove spoke up with a disbelieving tone. Huh. It really was late. Your neighbor wasn't a stranger to being awake at dawn, however, not like this. He was normally an early sleeper, early riser. This unexpected sunrise particularly awed him. Two of you watched on silently as the sun began to light the world. Cove then propped himself up in the back, backs of his arms and looked at you with a soft expression on his face. Do you want to go back home? I could carry you if you're too tired. You shook your head. You couldn't resist a yawn, but you were serious. It couldn't be time to go already. Cove chuckled affectionately and gripped you a little more. I get it. Okay, but it's been a long day. You've done a lot of things. Like, really, a lot. It has to end sometime. Since when are you okay with things ending? That made him laugh again. It was a fair question. Since you made me feel better about it. And we can still stay if you want to. Cove smiled brightly at you. His war as warm as the new rays of the sun that were tickling your skin. In that moment, you couldn't have appreciated him being there more. <laughs> he leaned into Cove. You bent, your, he, you bent yourself against Cove for extra support. He tilted his head against yours. You're my favorite neighbor. You're mine too. The two of you remained together on that familiar poppy hill where you first met until the world began to fade and blur. You were falling asleep. A few more gentle words drifted into your consciousness. See you tomorrow. Your eyelids dripped, but you felt good. You were safe and relaxed. Everything that had come before this had reassured you of that. You were confident that when you opened them again, things would be okay. You opened your eyes. Instead of the walls of your room, you were surrounded by open sky. It was not soft pillows and sheets underneath you, but the bed of earth and grass that you'd taken last night. The day welcomed you with a shining sun, a refreshing breeze, and the chirping song of birds. You cupped your face with your hands as you sat up, feeling the imprint of the blades of grass leaving lines on your cheeks. And Claire, hearing your name, you lowered your hands and looked around. There he was, your most influential neighbor, Cove Holden. He had made himself very comfortable, laying on his stomach with shoes kicked off and a flower in his hand. Good morning. Morning. Cove laughed, tickled with the overall situation and simply being able to spend time like this. <laughs> Told you I'd see you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm glad you were right. Cove's face lit up in a broad grin. Me too, but there wasn't really any doubt. Cove turned his head up to the sky, his expression content. Looks like it's going to be a nice day. We'll have to come up with something to do to make the most of it. He trailed off, blinking slowly in the sunlight. Someday, when we're even older than we are now, I wonder what we'll end up remembering this moment for. What will we feel when we look back at it? Will it be the same as what we're feeling right now? It's nice. I can't see what the future is going to look like again, but I think that's all right. I don't know, but I'm looking forward to finding out. Cove turned back to you, nodding in full agreement. He eyed the hill sprawled out before you and down below, where the wild hill and nature gave away to civilization. Your home and copes laid down at the bottom, neatly filled among the other houses in the neighborhood. Hey, Claire, I bet I can beat you in getting back to the road. You laughed, amused by the wager that reminded you of so many moments in your youth. As much as I like it here, it's okay if we leave for now. 
We can always come back to see the poppies and the fireflies again, right? Cove met your eyes, waiting for what you were going to say in response. You were amazing. He didn't know where that came from, but Cove blinked slowly, his eyes still locked on you. Though you didn't need to see his face to know that he adored you. If there had been any room for doubt, the gender way he spoke would have filled it up. You're one of a kind, huh? Cove beamed at you. His expression was so unlike the one he'd worn when you first found him here, swaddled in sadness and uncertainty. Yet you couldn't help but glimpse that boy once more underneath his bright expression and matured features. Come on. Come on. You are, he offered you a hand. You accepted it, your palm fitting it around his. Cove lifted himself up, pulling you along too. Our parents probably aren't going to come running for us this time. We've got to make our own call, and I say that we can't hide away forever. Poppy Hill is just one part of things. There's more out there for us than this time and this place alone. Let's enjoy it. You couldn't say whether you were the one that broke into a run, if Cove had been the one to start it, or if your feet had simultaneously made that choice for you both. The end result was the same with the two of you dashing down the hill like children, but with this no nostalgic rivalry that could only come as an adult. As the wind whipped past you, you knew that family and friends were waiting at the end of your sprint. There were more memories to make, after all. Life takes another step forward, 